feel like they're crooked. No. That'll do. That'll do. Do you ever lay awake at night and think, what if I go to a funeral and the body suddenly sits up? And the body suddenly sits up. Like just full zombie mode right there in the chapel. Grandma goes from eternal rest to crunch upright like she's got unfinished business. If you've ever asked yourself this, first of all, I love you. Welcome to the club. You're my people. Second of all, let's talk about it. Because this idea that dead bodies can suddenly move, sit up, twitch, groan is everywhere. And as a mortician, I get asked this all the time or I see it in comment sections. So let's settle it right now because today Today, we're breaking down rigor mortis, dead body myths, some Victorian panic, and yes, the truth about whether anyone's ever actually sat up in their casket. Let's go, coffin crew. It's time to get weird. Cue the intro. And if this gets published on a Monday, I'm hoping so. Here we go. Morbid Monday. I don't think I got any Morbid Monday songs right now. So where does this idea come from? Why are we all a little terrified that the dearly departed might make a surprise encore during their own funeral service? Blame Hollywood, blame horror novels, blame that one creepy uncle who swears it happened at his friend's neighbor's cousin's funeral, but also blame history because this fear isn't new. It goes all the way back to the Victorian era where people were obsessed with the idea of being buried alive and Honestly, it wasn't totally irrational. Back then, medical science wasn't exactly nailing the whole declaring death thing. They were kind of terrible at it. There were real cases of people being mispronounced dead, passed out from illness or a coma, shallow breathing, cold to the touch, and they'd be declared gone. Just like that, shipped off to the parlor, put in a coffin, and then they'd wake up. Hence the rise of safety coffins. Yep, literal bells were attached to the grave, strings tied to their fingers, so if the person buried started to move, someone above ground would hear the bell. Ding, ding, ding. That would be terrifying. And while sitting up in the casket wasn't necessarily a part of that phenomena, the idea that a body could suddenly move, that was burned into public fear. Fast forward a few centuries, and now we've got horror movies, Reddit threads, and TikTok comments where people swear their cousin's dead boyfriend sat up at the funeral. Spoiler alert, he totally didn't. So can it happen? Here's the truth. No, like hard no. A dead body cannot sit up in a casket. And I know that's kind of disappointing, especially if you were hoping for a little post-mortem drama. Let me explain. There is no muscle strength, no nerve impulses, no spinal coordination happening in a dead body. Nothing in the human body after death can coordinate a movement like sitting up. It takes active muscle engagement to raise the torso and that just stops after death. I love to tell people I hate doing sit-ups alive. I'm not going to do them while I'm dead. Nope. Now, I'm not saying dead bodies can't move at all, but not like that. And that brings us to, let's talk about rigor mortis. And I mean, actually talk about it. And it's not rigor, rigor mortis, it's rigor, rigor mortis. Let's talk about it, not just toss around the word like it's spooky seasoning. <laughs> This is one of the most misunderstood post-mortem processes out there. And people hear it and think, oh, the body goes stiff and scary, must be haunted. But no, babe, it's chemistry. When someone dies, their body doesn't just go cold like flipping a switch. In fact, this surprises people. Sometimes the body actually gets warmer first. There's a rare but real thing called post-mortem caloricity. Science word of the day, ding, 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 where the body heats up after death instead of cooling down. Down. This can happen after certain kinds of deaths, like seizures, infections, or heat stroke, where the metabolism was cranked into overdrive. At the end, it's basically the body's final metabolic burnout. Even if it's not true caloricity, the body can still feel warm to the touch in those first couple hours after. That residual warmth Fucking cars going by. That residual warmth plus the ongoing chemical reactions inside the muscles, that's what kickstarts rigor mortis. And here's how it works. After death, calcium floods the muscle fibers, locking them into place. ATP, the energy source that relaxes muscles, is gone. So everything just tightens up. First the jaw and the neck, then the arms, down to the legs. This can start as early as two hours after death and usually peaks at about 12 
hours in. And here's something a lot of people don't realize. Rigor doesn't stay forever. That stiffness, it goes away. It passes. The body softens again after a while, usually within 24 to 36 hours. So even if someone dies with their limbs locked tight, it doesn't mean they'll stay that way forever. But during that peak time, yeah, they're stiff. And if they die in an odd position, that's how they'll stay, at least for a little while. But what about twitching, gurgling, burping? Okay, I hear you. You're like, Lauren, my cousin swears her aunt made a sound after she died. Or my uncle saw my grandma's toe move. Let's break that down. Twitching can happen, but it's rare, usually right after death within minutes. That's leftover electrical activity in the nerves or the muscles, not full body movements. Gurgling, that's air escaping. The lungs are collapsing. And if the body shifts even slightly, that trapped air can push up through the vocal cords and make a weird sound. It's not speech, it's gas. And burping, also gas. Decomposition builds pressure in the abdomen. If you move the body, or sometimes if they're lying in a certain way, that pressure can release through the mouth or even the other end. But sitting up, no, that's just not even a part of this death dance. And listen, if you're thinking, okay, but Lauren, has this ever happened to you? Oh yeah, buckle up. You know I have stories. I had a removal once. This story still makes me crack up. Oh, okay. I had a death call once for this sweet little old lady. She was in her 90s. She probably weighed about 90 pounds soaking wet. I was getting her ready for cremation and I needed to move her from the cot into the cremation container, cardboard box, whatever you want to call it. Totally routine. Literally done this hundreds of times. So I go to move her and I'm doing what I call the princess carry. So, you know, one arm under the knees, one arm goes under the shoulders. So I'm gently lifting her torso towards me so I can scoot her into place. And in doing that, I've got her face like right next to my ear. Big mistake, big mistake. Because apparently this sweet little old lady still had air trapped in her vocal cords. And the moment I lifted her, she let out the most human sounding exhale of death sigh I have ever heard in my life, right in my ear. It was like, ah. I dropped her. I dropped her right back onto the cot and I screamed like a child. Then I had to walk laps around the building just trying to convince myself she wasn't alive. Like she wasn't gonna come back alive. I mean it. I had to full on coach myself back into sanity. She is dead. She is definitely dead. You're the mortician. You know this. Come on. And after that, I was forever changed. I don't care how quiet the room is or how peaceful the body looks. I always brace myself now when I lift someone up and towards me because that sucks. I, that breathy little ghost whisper in my ear. It was traumatizing in the funniest, most horrifying way possible. Honestly, I mean this honestly, I hope her ghost was watching and laughing her ass off because she got me so good. But she also did me a favor. Now when it happens again, and it does happen again quite frequently, I don't flinch. I nod like a seasoned professional and go, thank you for that final exhale, ma'am. Let's get you tucked in. Nice and cozy. <gasps> Ah, uh, I hope that story made you laugh because <laughs> I can still feel the tank. Like I'm, I can still feel myself getting worked up. I mean, I was so scared. I seriously thought she was alive. I was like, I'm gonna have to call nine one one. Somebody's gonna have to come in here. I need serious therapy. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> And by the way, I did apologize to that little old lady, even though she was dead and she couldn't hear me anymore, I profusely apologized because I felt terrible. Okay, seriously, now we're moving on. So as your friendly neighborhood mortician, let me reassure you, we take every precaution to make sure your loved one looks peaceful, still and dignified. We break rigor mortis during embalming by massaging and flexing the limbs. I'm not breaking grandma's bones. I mean, we have to manually stretch the body in order to release the rigor mortis. We then secure the jaw, we close the eyes, we pose the hands in a natural restful position. If the body arrives in full rigor mortis, we may have to wait or adjust how we prepare them. We pad the casket so the head doesn't roll or tip one way. We have hidden supports to keep everything positioned just right. No movement, no twitching, no midnight casket yoga. Okay, I have another real story for you. We got a call for a removal, a death call. Someone had just passed away while sleeping in a recline 
recliner. Not laying flat, but leaned back, head up, legs up, one arm dangling off the armrest. And when we got there, full rigor, locked up tight like a lawn chair that refuses to fold. Now, contrary to what you might think, no, we don't just sit around and wait for rigor mortis to pass. That can take hours. And time is rarely on our side and we are always short staffed. So what do we do? We work with the body, not against it. And in this case, we just did the best we could. We gently rolled them onto their side, coaxed their arms in, zipped the body bag and onto the cot they went, still frozen in that recliner shape. And yes, they looked a little funny on the stretcher. It happens. When we wheel someone out in full rigor, they definitely don't look like they're laying flat. And that might look like they were mid yoga, but that's just how it goes. What really throws families off is the jaw. People will often try to close their loved one's mouth after death and it just won't stay shut. Some hospice nurses will roll up towels and place them under the chin early on to encourage it to stay closed before rigor mortis sets in. But if it's already started, it's too late and that jaw is locked. But that doesn't mean they're going to suddenly sit up and say, surprise. It just means we're in the thick of a natural process the body goes through. Not spooky, just science. And we love science. So, can a dead body sit up in the casket? Nope. Not unless you've got a very haunted funeral home. The human body is miraculous in life and fascinating in death. But Hollywood has taken some real liberties with what's actually possible after we pass. Next time someone tells you their great aunt's eyelid twitched at the viewing, just smile, nod, and know the truth. I'm Lauren the Mortician, and I'm here to lift the veil, one death myth at a time. If you like this kind of break down science, mortuary weirdness, and busting spooky internet rumors, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, that's the best way to support me, and leave me your wildest, but my cousin swears, funeral stories in the comments. I love reading them. And until next time, stay weird, stay curious, stay horizontal if you're dead. I'm Lauren the Mortician, and that's the way the body decomposes. Do you want a mango kiss before you go? Hold on, don't go anywhere. Don't you know, gotta throw in a, just so you know, I'm from the Midwest. That's why I sound so like, don't you know, get a kick out of that. Yeah, okay, eh. Oh, here's the imposter. This is Lola. Hi, Yoya. Hi, she's the sweetest, I swear. She's so intelligent. Let me get your sissy. You don't give kisses. Denied. Eh. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> They need a kiss. They need a kiss or their week won't be right. Oh, thank you. Oh, 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 wait. Hey. Ah, okay. Ah, you get a mango kiss and a nibble. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye. You can't eat it. I need that.